Okay, now we're getting into trapping. We're going to be on our feet for the next little while, and then we'll break for lunch. This is what makes trap to tap unique. I mentioned before about the idea of position before submission. That's one of the major concepts in trap to tap. The idea there is that you trap the opponent with your position to later be able to submit them. Where the tap comes in is that when you submit a partner in training, they tap out. So that's how that name came to be, trap to tap. The other big part of it is this trapping. Trapping is a whole range of the fight. The four primary ranges are kicking, which is when I'm standing far enough away that he's at the extension of my leg. So I can kick him, but I can't punch him. That's the kicking range of the fight. If I take one step in from this position, I'm now in my punching range. He's at the extension of my arms. I can still use some kicks from this position as well, but now I'm primarily focused on my hands. One more step in is where we're going to live today. This is called trapping range. This is the most combative range of fighting, but it's the most ignored by untrained martial artists, or pe by people that aren't trained martial artists. At this range, you add in elbows, you add in knees, you add in headbutts, really devastating weapons. But the most important thing you add in is control. When you're standing here in punching range or standing here in kicking range, you have no control over the opponent. So if they are swinging punches wildly at you and they connect one, even if you're highly skilled, you've been boxing for many years, you've been working your strikes, your kicks for many years, all they need is that one lucky punch. And although it can still happen from here, it's much less likely. Because at this range, we're going to start to control their limbs. Okay? This is called the trapping range. The big two areas that this, what we're going to do today comes from are the Philippines and China. There are different martial arts here that, that look at how to control an opponent when you're here. The two big differences that you'll see, we'll do some drills that are from the Filipino martial arts and some drills that are from Chinese martial arts. You'll see the Chinese arts really emphasize attacking the center line. The Filipino martial arts you'll see really go around the outside, have more circular movements and attack the angles. A lot of that has to do with, in the Philippines, the focus is primarily on the weapons. So when he has a knife in his hand, coming right up the middle is, is really difficult to do. I want to get out here where I'm safe from that knife. So you'll see those two concepts, and we're going to start with a Filipino drill. This one's called Hubud Lubud. This loosely translates to, to tie and untie. What's going to happen is as we do these drills, after lunch, we're going to come back and we're going to look at how each one, we're going to do five drills, and we're going to apply each of the five to a technique in grappling where we just spent the last couple of hours. And you're going to start to see not only how they apply in the techniques I'm going to show you, but you'll start having flashbacks to the techniques we did earlier today. And see, oh wow, I can see how this drill will give me control to be able to do this better. And I want you to make those connections. I'll help you find them on your own. But when you see them, I want you to point them out. So first one is Hubud Lubud. We're going to start like this. We're going to stand in that trapping range. Doesn't matter what lead you're in. Try from a left lead. Try from a right lead. Try from neutral. A lot of times we start these just standing still like this. I want you just focused on the upper body for now. He's going to take his arm, and this is something coming around the side. Remember I talked about a weapon? It could be a club, a knife coming at me. The best way to practice this drill is for him to just open his hand and throw a knife hand strike at my neck. If he was slashing me with, his, with a knife, that's the, most, the closest thing we have empty hand would be that knife hand strike. Okay? So that's the one we practice with the most. And we're going to block with our same side hand, palm down. So I'm using the edge of my forearm to block that strike that's incoming. Immediately, I'm going to follow up with this other hand, making an X under his arm. This concept comes from the knife. When he comes in with a knife, I almost always want to get two arms against one. And if I make this X, I make it so the only direction he can take his knife is back towards him. If I just block with the one arm, if that was just a knife hand strike, I don't have anything to worry about. But if it's a knife, that knife's now going to follow down and slash my belly. So I have to immediately counter by putting this arm underneath. The only way the knife can go now is back to him. I still wouldn't want to allow that to happen, but that makes me in a much safer position. So those are the first two movements, block and then X. As you do this, we're starting to come out this angle. And right now, we're going to stay stationary, but I might potentially be moving over there. For now, though, I'm going to start to kind of move my head under, and I'm going to take my left hand, and I'm going to trap his arm to his body. From here, my hand is loaded up. I'm going to fire back the exact same strike. And in this drill, we just continue to go back and forth. What this does, this allows both people to practice. And as you speed it up, you end up getting hundreds of repetitions in a matter of minutes. Let's go back to what we talked about a second ago. 
Remember practice? We practice until what? We don't no longer have to think. What's nice about these sensitivity drills, we call them, is how much practice you can get in a matter of five minutes. You'll get to that 100 or 1,000 mark much faster than you will the way we were practicing with the UPA escape because it's a simple movement. But these movements will later translate to the bottom, to the ground. And when you get down there and you end up doing this part quickly enough to secure a position because it was reflex, because you've done it a thousand times up here, doing the technique that comes next will be much easier because you've already set it up. Okay? So we're here, we're blocking, immediately making the X, and then trapping. Firing back the same strike, and we're just going back and forth. Remember to do this at trapping range. So we're not out here at punching range trying to do this where we're reaching. We're in nice and close. Do not feel like you have to speed it up really fast. Speed should just be a byproduct of your technique. If you force it early, the technique gets sloppy. So really focus on keeping your elbows in. Try not to be this way for the drill. Okay, elbows in, making that X. Not slapping his arm down where we wouldn't have control. Bringing his arm to his body and firing back. In reality, I wouldn't let the arm go. I would keep it trapped and try to trap the other arm. So both of his arms are stuck to him where I can hit him, take him down, whatever. In a drill, we're going back and forth. Remember, it loosely translates to tie and untie. So we're just back and forth. Tying and untying. This is called hubud lubud. Grab a partner. Let's go. So, so far, categories. We did positions. Transitions. And the last one, we hit those trapping drills. Okay, the next two categories we're going to hit simultaneously and we'll hop back and forth between them. First up, we want to hit some applications of the five trapping drills we did before lunch. And the last category are submissions. And the reason we'll go back and forth is we, a lot of this is going to carry into this. So we don't want to save that for the very end and then have to track back. So we'll, we'll go back and forth between these two. Okay, Let's start with an application for the Huba Luba drills. What we'll do is we'll hop up on the feet and maybe everybody try it before. I'll show the technique, but then before you do the technique, maybe get up on the feet and do the drill for 10 seconds, 15 seconds, just to refresh it, get it back in your mind, and then we'll hit the ground and try it. Okay, so Huba Luba, remember we did two variations. We had the hook line, the one coming from around the outside, and we were blocking making the X, trapping the arm to his body, and then firing back. And that's that one, two, three. That's the very first drill we did, the first trapping sequence we did. Everybody remember this one? Yes, sir. Okay. A ton of application for this one. We're going to start with the mount. Back to the very first position we did. And our first transition, remember, was the UPA escape. So the couple times we're going to end up in this reference point, one of them is when he's coming in trying to control my head. We looked at that in side control and half guard, we didn't want the person to control the head. And then remember when we learned the UPA escape, we had his hands on the floor and we were moving ourselves under and pulling the arm in to get the UPA. And if we couldn't, maybe he was controlling our head or his arms were too strong, we were going to the elbow knee. Well, in this setting, we're going to say, okay, we don't want him to control our head. So as he comes in, we're blocking that bicep. So there's one in Huba, where we're blocking. What's two? We're going to come under and cross. We're going to make this X. Well, step three is going to change. As I move my body under, this hand's going to come down and control his sleeve. What this does is I just extend my arm, and if he has something there that I can grab like a sleeve, he will not be able to get back. The amount of power you have to hold this once you get here, it keeps him so extended, it's a very easy position to hold. So I'm just extending my arm, holding that sleeve. What this does is since all his weight's over here, it makes this leg extremely light. So we're going to come down and do that elbow knee escape. When we get out, since his body is over here, rather than just ending up with half guard or closed guard, when we move our hips out, we're going to end up all the way up on top of the person's back. So what we've done is we've not invented anything. We haven't created anything new. We've taken an escape that previously existed in grappling, the elbow knee escape, but we've applied a setup for it from the trapping world that puts us in an even better position than we would have done with just a basic escape. So from here. He's coming in to control the head. We're blocking, making the X, bringing this arm all the way across to grab his sleeve. Keep that arm extended. Sometimes down here, all you have to do is grab his pant leg and push. Doesn't have to be quite as fancy as that elbow knee escape, but it can be. You can bring the elbow all the way to the knee. We just gotta get our leg out from under. Once the leg is out, remember the keys. We had to keep that leg controlled. 
This time, since I'm taking his back, though, I won't worry about stepping over here. I'll just move my hips out and keep this leg hooking. Remember when we had back mount? When we learned that position in the beginning, we had hooks. So here's my first hook for back mount. Now I'm going to get up on my elbow and climb up onto my knees. When I get behind him, though, so I only have one of the two hooks. If there's a big space over here and it looks available, I might put my second hook in. But if it's not there, I do not want you to force it. This is where a lot of people lose back mount. Is they don't have patience getting their hooks in. So they try to throw that leg over and they end up falling off. The person lifts their hips up. It's disastrous. Let's go again from this angle. So he's coming in to control the head. We're blocking. Xing. Forcing that arm across. Coming down and attacking this leg. Leg comes out. We're moving our hips out. Here's that first hook. You can use this hand to help you climb. Grab his lat, grab his gi, use that to help you get up on your elbow and stay really close to him so his arm can't get back across. If the hole is there, the hook goes in, try to do it without giving up your weight. So put your hook in and keep your, yourself down nice and low. Remember in back mount the controls, we had one arm over, one arm under. We wanted our, bat, our chest nice and centered on his back. Make sure you're not falling off to one side or the other. Try to be right in the middle. If he rolls, you stay with him, you end up in that full back mount position with both hooks, arms controlling. So let's start with that one. Again, you can start on your feet. Make sure you remember the application of the drill. So we're going one, two, three. Once you feel like you kind of got that, you've done it a couple times, just hit the mat and try that escape. One, two, three is down here. Sometimes we'll just get here and stop. Again, we'll take the hook when it becomes available. Maybe he starts trying to escape. Hook goes in. Grab a partner and stride out. Take the back from bottom mount. 